Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another software architecture in Go video. In today's episode, we're going to be covering a topic called cache aside. So, what is caching? Well, caching is storing and using a pre-computed value. Depending on how you define a pre-computed value, most of the times this indicates is an expensive calculation. Okay, so if you are talking about something like a file that happens to be a massive file, think of uh, maybe thousands of gigabytes or a terabyte, maybe you're going to be using that content delivery network. But if you're using an API that happens to be using some calculations that return something back to the client, you need to cache those values. Okay, so this is used for improving scalability. So you're copying a value over to something somewhere else so perhaps you have a, a few different instances and then you're copying the values over to those instances so what is cache aside so cache aside is also known as lazy loading the way it works is that you have your clients and you have your api and this api has a imaginary square think about it and inside that imaginary square there is a memory store and there is also a you know your regular persistent data store this memory store is going to be used for getting the values as quick as possible and if those values are not needed we're going to be retrieving those values from your regular database or persistent data store so let's think about this in the first time the api the client goes and hits the api the persistent data store or rather the memory data store is going to say, hey, do I have it? If I don't have it, I'm going to pull it from the persistent data store and then I'm going to get it and going to store it locally in my persistent memory based data store and I'm going to send it back to our clients. So when the next request happens, that happens to be the same arguments, I'm going to be doing something similar. Does it exist in my local memory store? Maybe it does. If it does, and I'm going to return it back to our clients, and therefore I'm going to be returning it back to whoever requested the API. So how does this work in real life? I'm going to show you the code, and most of these links, or rather, most of the, the code that I have right here, I previously covered using Memcached and Redis. But the way I'm going to describe you this implementation is going to be a little bit different. Again, the links to these examples will be in the description. I have two links to two previous videos in co uh, covering Redis and Memcached. So if you are curious how to do something similar using those different technologies, please feel free to check that out. So let's go and see how this looks in real life. So as usual, we have this code in link in the description. So please feel free to check that out. The way it's going to be implemented is I'm going to be opening the readme for just whatever reason but really what is happening is that there is a package called memcached that it happens to be implementing the methods that we're going to be wrapping for the Elasticsearch package the idea for this example is that we're going to be taking the Elasticsearch type and specifically the search method and we're going to be recording or rather caching everything that we're going to be receiving from the API and then depending on whatever uh, the logic that we described before we're going to be returning the cache values and then we're going to be sending those back to the client. So let's for just a reminder, we have the task uh, type in the Elasticsearch package. It defines three methods, methods, index, delete and search. So the memcached type or rather the memcached package defines a type called task that happens to be also defining those three methods and the way it works is that we're going to receive in the original data store which is the elastic search data store it's sort of like a middleware and then we're going to be only calling for this specific logic that we're trying to implement only calling the search method and then depending of if we have the values in our cache or our data store if it doesn't exist, we're going to be doing what we described above in, or not above before in the previous you know, section is with the animation is that if it doesn't exist, we're going to be calling the original data store. We're going to be saving that in our local data store and then we're going to be sending that back to our client. If it does exist in our local data store, we're just going to be sending that back to our client. So let me show you an example that happens to be using this logic. So I have 
a the Swagger API as usual. We're going to be creating one that says, hey, new hello. We're going to be creating this now and says, hey, I created a new hello task. If I search the new hello using hello, what is going to happen in our output in this search um, server is, is going to be saying, hey, the values didn't exist originally. But if you notice here, I said I'm setting the values. If I request this again, what is going to happen is that, hey, the values were found because the way we define the logic originally is that it goes through our local memory or memory or data store that happens to be using memcached. It requests uh, the values locally. If it doesn't exist, it goes to the origi original persistent data store. If it does, then it goes back and then it saves that in the memory data store. And with this, what is going to happen is that every time we search the same values or right, the same you use the same arguments we're going to be sending back those values back to our client so let's jump into the conclusion and i will give you a different things that i didn't cover specifically for this example okay so let's go one thing that i didn't cover and i didn't mention is how can we deal with expirations how can we deal with invalidations what happens is the original value changes how we're going to be dealing with those things I will be covering those in a different video, but please, please keep in mind that this is sort of like the beginning of dealing with caching mechanisms using Go and when dealing with and implementing software architectures. In really, I could be in Go and it doesn't matter what programming language or what platform you're using. It's usually the same story. Anyways, thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time and any questions, please let me know. I will talk to you, like I said, next time. See you.